Well, I dropped out of college in 1974, and I was taking a night school course here at Harvard from Professor Richard Schultes, and he showed a picture which changed my life and sent me to the Amazon. It was a picture of three Indians in grass skirts and bark cloth masks. He said, see, here you see three Indians of the Yukuna tribe. All of them are doing the Kayari dance to keep away the forces of darkness. The one on the right has a Harvard degree. Next slide, please. Well, that was Schultes. And that got me interested in plants, got me interested in Indians, got me interested in the Northwest Amazon where this dance took place. And that's where Rice did his work. And he was the Harvard man who was there 40 years before Schultes. And he was the one who did the first real detailed maps of that area. I would say that the greatest importance that Rice had in terms of recognizing the importance of the rainforest, in terms of understanding the rainforest, and in terms of people like us being able to protect the rainforest, is this idea of using technology. Not just getting in an airplane and going down and, and photographing it and then mapping it, but the idea of how do you find and use new technologies, which is how we do the mapping now, uh, by training the Indians to make their own maps. So I, I think we're following uh, Rice's precedent, not only in using aerial photography, but in using new technologies in creative and innovative ways. We had some illegal loggers come into an indigenous uh, village and try and get a concession, and they showed some maps, and they said, okay, so your village is here, and you have another village here, and we just want to do logging around that. And uh, the, the sub-chief, God bless him, went in his hut and came out and laid out his map with several hundred uh, icons on it. it says, well, our village is here, but our sacred area is here, and the fish spawn here, and we hunt here, and then we, and the loggers just said, these guys are too organized, and they left. Now, these stories don't always have such a happy ending, but they do exist, and it's giving these people the tools to take charge of their own environmental and cultural destiny. More land has been taken over, controlled, managed with maps than with bullets and swords. Since I sat down here, uh, there's stuff on Google Earth that wasn't here three minutes ago or 30 minutes ago or three hours ago. So maps are really living, breathing organisms. But I had a sort of back to the future moment when I was at the Royal Geographical Society in London in April and dug down and dug down and dug down and came out with a map of Chitabichetti made by Hamilton Rice. Now this is essentially a hand-drawn map. It doesn't compare with modern maps that you can press on an icon and then invisible two-headed black... Jaguar shows up because that's what the shaman put on the map. But sometimes going back to the past uh, helps you see further into the future. Well, Rice has his detractors. He was a very flamboyant character. I mean, at the depths of the Depression, he drove around or was driven around by a chauffeur in a blue silver cloud Rolls Royce uh, wearing a fur coat. He spent his summers in a 65-room mansion in Newport, uh, built by his wife, Eleanor Widener, the mother of Harry Widener, the woman that built Widener Library here in Harvard Yard. So he wasn't everybody's cup of tea, and I can understand why he would step on some toes. Now, geography was closed down at Harvard, and some of the blame was laid at his feet, that you know he didn't show up for classes because he wanted to stay longer in Europe. Um, I suspect that some of the politicking that is necessary uh, to get the job done in all big institutions maybe just wasn't his forte. So sometimes we, we hear things from other cultures. Uh, sometimes we hear things from indigenous cultures and we think, well, that's silly or primitive. And really what it's all about is we're not listening. We're not hearing them. We don't understand what they're saying. Sometimes a question of language. So I like to think that this type of work with these other cultures induces uh, some humility in terms of taking the time to listen and learn from them, uh, not the idea that we're going down there to teach them the map because we have all the answers. We don't have all the answers. You look at the world, we don't have all the answers. These people have some of the answers. Western medicine is the most successful system of, tr of, of, of medicine ever devised, but it's full of holes. Pancreatic cancer, insomnia, uh, acid reflux, uh, drug-resistant bacteria. We don't seem to have the answers for these things. <clears throat> I think that these people do have some of the answers for some of these things. And that's why I want to live in a world uh, as rich as the world I was born into in terms of great rainforests and pristine waterfalls and magical plants and people.